Hey Vogue family, a couple of months ago Nearshore Living did a video about CBDCs, that central bank digital currencies. This is something that a lot of people fear. I don't think that there should be the level of fear of it that people have, but there's a lot to be discovered as this comes out over time. This is not something that's going to happen overnight, not something for most people to worry about. But I did want to do a little bit of a response or a kind of addition and an appendix uh, to what Ron was talking about on his Nearshore Living uh, video, uh, because I think there's some concepts that are that are easily missed uh, that he didn't really delve into. He's trying to do a pretty quick video. And I just want to remind people that tomorrow's Thursday, we will be doing the live stream unless something goes horribly wrong. And again, I'm not out walking around doing any exploration because tendinitis, but it's getting much better. Don't worry. Okay. CBDC. Some people had proposed and Ron only kind of shot this down. He didn't really delve into it. That moving to a small state, presumably a small state that does not use a, a global currency, right? So like Nicaragua doesn't count. El Salvador doesn't count, but let's use a Honduras as an example or Costa Rica. These are places that have their own currency, their own central bank, uh, but not sharing it with the outside world. So it's completely controllable inside their country. Okay, so these are the examples we're talking about. And there's lots of these around the world. These are hardly limitations. Uh, but so we're talking about countries, just a few million people and their own independent central bank with their own currency that is 100% controlled in country. Got it. Okay, so with these countries, they presumably won't go to a CBDC, at least not for quite some time. And until they do, moving to a country like this, in theory, could protect you from using CBDCs. And the reason that people are worried about CBDCs primarily is that they will lose privacy. In theory, every transaction that they do will be visible to the government, which currently the government has an awful lot of visibility into your transactions, but there's times you can grab cash. They know when you get cash and they know when that cash turns into other things. But in theory, there's a number of times you can move cash around and they don't know about it. That's mostly a theory. If they really want to know, they're going to know. But for a lot of people who are just doing normal transactions, no one's bothering to track that. But if they want to, they certainly can even with cash. But it doesn't matter if you're working this way. The assumption is you can get away from these privacy concerns, at least to some degree, by moving to cash or other mechanisms. With CBDCs, that will essentially go away. At least that's the assumption. It's probably correct. Okay. So by moving to a small country that doesn't have a CBDC, could you get away from this? Well, I don't think so. And here's why. The idea is that, well, I'm going to be able to spend my money and nothing's going to be visible. And that's kind of true, assuming that cash is not uh, going to be traceable in any way, which may be true in a Honduras, for example. Uh, but a lot of the things you're going to want to buy are not going to be available in country. This is the nature of any really small country. I live in Nicaragua, and if I want to buy things, it generally has to come from the United States or China. Even if it's not made there, it's going to pass through there. I need some place to ship it to me. I need somewhere to manufacture it. So most of the things I'm going to buy, I am not going to have privacy on regardless. And it doesn't matter about CBDCs. They already know that I'm doing these transactions because they're so visible because they're international. So sure, I could hide when I'm going to the street vendor and getting some carne asada. The government may not know that I ordered chicken instead of beef, or in my case, cheese, because I'm vegetarian. But that's not really very important. There aren't very many people anywhere in the world who actually have privacy concerns about what they're ordering for dinner. I understand that you'd prefer if people didn't know, but it doesn't really matter how many times you bought soda versus beer, which uh, Express Mart you like to shop at, which type of gas you're putting in your car. They know these things on a bigger scale. They don't care what you're doing specifically. It doesn't matter. So this privacy is kind of a myth, and it's actually a fear that governments like you to have. I'm not saying they're going through some big effort to make you scared of basic privacy, but it's handy for them. The more the people react emotionally, the more control they have over you. So the feeling of panic, that concern, always be aware that that could be you being not specifically targeted, but a general manipulation to make you do things that actually end up exposing you a lot more. The Bitcoin movement, of course, being a famous one of that, the government loves it when people move to Bitcoin because every single thing you do is totally visible and in permanent record. So there's no hiding. And people think that they're doing it out of panic, out of any, any kind of panic, privacy panic, government control panic, you name it. And they're doing, and almost always, when you have a panic response, you hand control to exactly the people that you are afraid of. It's the nature of panic responses. Your lizard brain, your amygdala, is not good at decision making. That is its role. Its role is fight or flight, not logic. So you want to use logic. Whenever you're trying to protect yourself in the real world, logic, not fight or flight. Okay, so the issue is, so you live in Honduras. Yes, the government is not able, in theory, to track your dinner. They may not track where you're, you know, buying just normal everyday things. They don't know which brand of toilet paper you're buying. They don't know which pulperia you like to shop at. No problem. If they needed to find out, they certainly would. 
not even the Honduran government, if the American government, the Chinese government wanted to know what toilet paper you're buying from which pulperia, they would know, trust me, there's no way you're going to hide from that if they care. But they probably don't, because why would they? Now, when you go to buy something real, like a book, a video game, music, uh, a car, a uh, property, you need to move money to or from a business, you need to do anything of significance, anything that would be worth tracking in the real world, it's not going to be coming from Honduras. I understand your yummy uh, Ranchitos chips are coming from Honduras. You're all safe there, most likely. But as soon as you want to get anything significant, any electronics, any, any information, that's all going to happen internationally. The moment you're crossing those barriers, you can't use that local currency. And whatever you're doing is going to transfer into global currencies. That doesn't mean a single global currency, any currency that works internationally, euros, US dollars, Chinese yuan, you name it. And if those things are traceable, one, it doesn't matter if you're in a small country or not, you're traceable. And two, it doesn't matter if they go to CBDCs or not, you're already traceable. So the act of moving to a small country, I think, is a misnomer. When you're acting in your local community anywhere, even in the United States, you're bartering and little tiny cash transactions are already as unreasonably traceable as they're going to be. If the government wants to know what you're doing, they will. And if they don't care, they won't track it. And the same thing's going to happen. You're simply redefining your local community to being the small country that you're in. But since small countries don't manufacture a large scale of items, there's only a few places that things that people really buy in the real world that matter at all come from, your money is going to remain completely traceable and moving to a small country will do nothing about it. Which Ron kind of hints at, but he doesn't delve into exactly why economically it's a meaningless exercise. But it's important to know because it will affect people who think that that's why they would move to a small country. Now, I live in a small country. I think there's lots of great benefits to it. That's just not one of them.